Evening all. Let me see here. Set all my little parameters. And uh, uh, there we go. Good evening, one and all. Welcome to Learn CNC with Javi, episode 10. Thank you all for uh, coming. And uh, actually, let me get my headsets on if you'll give me a couple minutes for some housekeeping. Dooby dooby doo. <clears throat> There we go. It's a little better. And how's everyone doing tonight? <clears throat> well, today's show, we're going to have a little talk about digital probes. I'll give everybody a uh, a few a uh, couple minutes to uh populate and uh then we'll get right to it let's see Corey. you can know what well, by the way welcome everybody welcome uh john jeff steve of course uh steve carmichael uh steve steve neil and i said of course and steve carmichael Corey, jeff i mentioned uh reginald welcome let's see going through facebook laptop give it another uh minute or so oh and mark did i say mark uh, yep just checking Alrighty. Gonna be a Russ. pretty pretty simple show today. Hey Russ, how's it going? It's gonna be a pretty simple and straightforward show. I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, touch probes, 3D probes, uh, 3D uh, software, and uh, uh, software used to convert uh, point cloud, and I'll explain what that is, into mesh or 3D vectors. And we'll, uh, we'll move on with that in a, in a little bit. And if anybody has any suggestions as far as what to design, uh, I'll uh, yank out the, uh, the Aspire and we'll, uh, and we'll do some, uh, some design work. If anybody has any issues with either text on text or 3d issues, uh, simple issues. Uh, if you, if you're having, um, difficulty or any questions at all, whether anything CNC related, whether it's, uh, design on, on Vectric software or working with, uh, or connecting the CNC, working with, uh, breakout boards, Whatever you like, just throw it all out there. I'll try to get to the questions. So let's go ahead and begin with uh, the uh, touch probe. A touch probe uh, in its most basic form, for those of you who have one, is nothing more than a, a connection, a contact between two points. It's a switch, uh, if you will. In... Uh, in this part, in this CNC that I have, I have a touch probe that it's a block of metal, as most of them are, a block of aluminum, where one wire goes to the breakout board or to one of the contacts, one of the inputs. And on your Mach 3 or on your Win CNC or your Linux CNC, on, on your, uh, not the CAM software, yeah, actually the CAM, uh, the Mach 3 software or the or that one, the controller software, that you choose which uh, which which input it is if, if it's not already set up for you. And uh, if you've seen any of Dave's or uh, or Peter Pasuelo's videos on hooking up a probe, you'll see that there's an option where you can actually touch the probe 
make the contact between the ground or positive, depending on uh, the source, depending on how you have it configured, and the touch plate. One wire will go to ground, one wire, one wire will go to the touch plate, or one wire will go to positive, and one wire will go to the touch plate, the touch plate being connected to the breakout board. So you'll have, in S, in basically you'll have two wires coming from your controller. And when those two wires are touched together, a little green light comes on, uh, it knows. That's in its most basic form. So when you have a touch plate, you have uh, one wire alligator clipped to the, or in my case, it, since everything's made out of metal, it all goes through th right through the spindle to the end of the probe. You have the probe, you have the touch plate. As soon as they make contact, the program tells it to whoosh, go, go back up. A digital probe is very similar in the sense that you have a program that will tell it where to go. Uh, so you'll start with, uh, let's say you want to have a 3D shape of a USB drive for whatever reason. And you glue your USB down with hot glue onto the surface and you tell your program, listen, here it's uh, start here. And uh, this is one of the outermost things, depending on your program. You could tell it start here and it will actually go all around first determining the perimeter and then it will actually determine all the individual heights and it'll do that by a, a digital probe as opposed to a touch probe a digital probe both the wires in the contact are in the probe you'll have one go to ground and one go to another uh number and when the probe is moved sideways when the probe is moved up and down it will make a contact. The program will tell it to back off. And that's the basic form of it. Now, what program you might ask? Well, for Mach 3, and we'll discuss Mach 3 at the moment, there's this beautiful little program. Uh, I should say not even a program. It's Mach, Mach 3 does it. The thing is you have to run a script in order to do it. Mach 3 has all the necessary capabilities to move a CNC, I mean, to move a router with an attached probe and stop it when it hits a point and move it in another direction. That's It's a simple control function in Mach 3. What program are you going to use to tell it to do all of this? Well, I'm glad you asked. Some uh, nice ingenious person wrote uh, a program called, let me see, what's Eric Brust from Crafty CNC wrote this program. Let me share my screen with you guys. Well, let me catch up on the uh, in case there's any questions. Uh, Steve is looking for me, but uh, and good evening all for those who I haven't said hello to. There's uh, a program here called Probit. You'd be amazed at the price because it's only thirty dollars. It's a it's a, a simple program, and uh, there's a free version available that. Uh, uh, a very, very limited, a full working version, but it's very simple and limited. Uh, uh, the unlicensed version. You could, here, let me scroll through real quick some of the features of this particular program. Now, this program will take a probe, which I'll discuss uh, a little bit later, how to make your own probe, unless you want to buy one for 400 bucks, And it will... Use the probe to create the, C the 3D images. Um, you have all types of uh, setups, and it's very simple. It's a very well-documented program. Let me see if I can scroll through. 
let's say you have your shape here. It will actually go through. And by the way, I, I recommend you to go to, uh, I think it's craftycnc.com. I'm not sure. I wish I had the web page, but uh, I'll find it for you by the end of the show. They actually have a video on the probit. In fact, you could probably Google in YouTube uh, probit video. And he has it a simple video showing the probit working. It will, it can do interiors, it can do exteriors. And obviously this is just the first step. The first step is, as I said, you probe the exterior of, of, of something. So you have the actual exterior perimeter. After that, it will go and do the following. It will, one by one, it will probe. Let me see if I can have a better picture of this. Um, this is also for pockets. It probes pockets. It probes exteriors. It probes objects. So the object, first thing it'll do is it'll go around the outside. Then it'll actually go up and down and up and down point by point on the XY coordinate and create what's called a point cloud, a point cloud uh, d data. It'll give you point cloud data. Point cloud data is nothing more than a simple uh, X, Y, and Z list in a CSV file, in, a, in an Excel file, in a comma delimited file. The trick is, clearly, take the point cloud data and convert it to uh, a mesh or a, or a vector program. And I know a lot of you are, some of you are, want to know what that's all about. Well, I won't go into detail because that's a lot more complicated. Let me see. Check goes, huh? <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yeah, uh, hang on a second. Let me. <coughs> okay, that fixed it. There we go. I have been able to talk because every time I'd cough or move, it would, it would go all over the air. Sorry about that. I had the speakers on for some reason or another. CraftyCNC.com is the proper address, according to Mark. CraftyCNC.com. Excellent. Thanks, Mark. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let me put that out there. Ron Cleveland is here. Hey, Ron, how are you? Uh, let's do the whole address. Yeah, you forgot to make me a, a, a moderator, so I can't type in anything. Let's see here. Where is... Uh... Okay. There we go. Make Steve a moderator there. Um, okay, so back to this. So, so we have our Probit software, which will scan any image, assuming you have your probe connected to the CNC and uh, your Mach 3 uh, properly configured, which is a simple configuration. Uh, look at Peter Pozuelo's. Uh, eventually, I'll, I'll make a... Uh, uh, how to build and connect it video. But for the moment, uh, Peter Pasuelo makes a great video on how to connect the probe and, and a few others do as well. Uh, a regular touch probe to a breakout board. And uh, you can do, it's the same thing, basically. You just connect it to one of the other open pins. Uh, on Mach 3, you, uh, under ports and pins, I believe it is. I'm not sure. Off the top of my head. But uh, you, you guys can figure that part out. Uh, and then after that, you run this program, probe it. It creates a point cloud image, a point, a point cloud data. Now, the next step is converting the point cloud data to a mesh or a 3D format. For that, you have a few options available. If you guys, if any of you guys are into SolidWorks, SolidWorks has that built in. So you could actually import um, point cloud data into SolidWorks. 
And there is just a whole lot of learning there. You have to play with all the features because when you convert something from point cloud data, let's say I have this object and it has given me a bunch of points and I decided that the resolution was pretty far uh, or even close. You have to tell it what to do with those points. Do you go from here to here to here to here? Do you go in triangles? Do you? I mean, there's a lot of different options available in each of these programs. But the programs, one of them is SolidWorks. Another one is MeshLab. MeshLab is a free program. Uh, a little, a little, a little bit difficult to use. Sorry about that. Phone call. Mesh, Mesh Lab is a Mesh Lab is a free program that it's a little bit difficult to use, but it's uh, it uh, comes in handy. Um, let's see what other one. Uh, I'm sorry, I just had it all here on the desktop, and uh, and uh, last week, and all of a sudden it just all went away. So. Forgive me, but there is one more program that, that'll do that that's not ridiculously expensive. But if you Google uh, point cloud data to 3D, you'll be able to find a few software. You'll be able to find a few programs out there. Uh, that being said, once you have your, your data, there you go. Now let me move on to the probe. And allow me to share my screen once more. Again, there is, give me a second, I'm pulling up the picture now. There is a person called Grunblau, I believe is his name, who offers this particular document for free. And I will have the, uh, uh, Steve, if you can search for the link for me and and, and post it on there. I think it's groomblau.com or, or some, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll check it in a second. Uh, it might be on the actual document. The document is this. Now, check this out. This is very impressive work. Using sliding closet door springs, half-inch aluminum tubes, which you can get at Lowe's, a pneumatic needle ball. Yes, we are talking about the type to inflate uh, a uh, volleyball or basketball or football, or I can go on and on and on soccer, uh, and a few nuts and bolts and some copper wire. And of course, some MDF, you can build yourself rather cheaply, this wonderful little probe. And you could pretty much see how it works. You have the wires, you have two sets of wires one is, and one probe will be connected here. One probe will be connected uh, here. Here you go. Here are the wires right here. Both both wires go one connected to the bottom set, one connected to the top, and it's a tri in a triangular format. Now, some of you are thinking to yourself, "But wait a second! Isn't there supposed to be like four wires or three wires?" There's two wires. It's a simple switch. In any direction, it's the same contact. Just so you realize it there are other probes other fancy probes that that do different things but this particular setup and working with point cloud and stuff like that is as a is a simple switch two wires think of this as uh, a touch probe and nothing nothing more than than your touch probe one wire goes to ground or positive depending uh on your setup the other one goes to the um, the breakout board uh, data point. So as you see, if the pin, well, this is a, <laughs> this I found just absolutely uh, hilarious that you're gluing a, uh, it's so, it's so simple. It's ingenious. Gluing a ball headed needle, a pin rather like a you know one of those sewing pins well not sewing but a pin inside the the uh uca glue and put it inside there uh in the pneumatic needle valve the brass fitting again you find at uh at lowe's 
this uh, <laughs> this is nothing more than a a closet uh, door spring. Every one of these things is commonly available. These pieces can be CNC'd. And you say, wait a second, where's the design? Well, look on the next page. Here you go. A nice, simple design, which anybody can uh, auto trace and, and cut on their CNC. He's even got the center points. And uh, he's even got the hardware set up on how to hook it up. And there it is. There it is right there. We were talking about it earlier. The input signals on the ports and pins, which is your second or third option in the Mach 3 configuration. Mark could probably tell you exactly from memory, but uh, in under configuration, you go to ports and pins. You'll you'll see all these different uh, tabs and choose input signals, and choose the probe. Click it on to uh, active low, uh, and that would be ground on one side, uh, and the other side would be. There you go, pin number 10 or whatever pin you choose to, to use. That's a very simple setup. This is how you tell whether it's on right here on Mach 3. You move the probe after it's connected and, and make sure that that thing lights up or, or you're going to be running your, the first thing you're going to be doing is, is messing up your probe if you run the program. So again, let me show you this, this beautiful picture. These bottom three are connected to one wire. <coughs> these top three are connected to another wire. When these two pieces, this 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 piece here is fixed to this top piece, and all you have to do is just move it ever so slightly, and it makes contact with these uh, with these pins. It's a simple contact switch. I mean, it's and this is a very nice design. So. I hope you've enjoyed the the uh, probe there. Let me see if I can find the uh, website for it. It's groomblau.com. It is groomblau.com. Okay, good. I said I put the link up for that. Uh, I couldn't find that act actual form, but uh, Kevin Calhoun and Rick Nolan just showed up. Yeah, groomblau.com, and it's. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, real quickly search for the uh, form because it's under you know a second I say it, it gives the MDF 3700 is the number that's on that form you've got right there yeah at MDF 3790 CNC so look under let me see I don't know this is that it da, 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 da. That's not it. Drag knife, soap dish. You got a lot of neat stuff on here. CNC. Okay. Bri slash Brian slash download slash CNC digitizing probe dot PDF. Thank you, Mark. There you go. If uh, Mark gave you guys the, uh, the link there. I gave the last half of it. For the last half of it, but it's groomblau.com and then slash all of that. Uh, let me see if I can. Well, regardless. Uh, so there you go. That's the probe. That's the um, basic instructions on how to connect the probe. Uh, summarizing point cloud and how to create mesh. Now, when you go into your Oh, great. Every time I move this to the wrong corner, it 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 uh, puts my screen to sleep. Okay, here you go. When you go to, let me reopen this and show you the... Dun, 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 dun. All right. Set up my, uh, why is this not? Mark says, if you use a touch plate to set your Z, you will need to set up a new Mach 3 profile to use this digitizing probe. Yes. You won't be able to run the touch plate and the probe at the same time. 
Uh, yes, Mark. It, it would have to be. It would have to be on different uh, pins. You uh, you actually could tell the probe. Uh, you set the you set the probe on one pin, and you set the uh, the touch plate on a different one. Um, They're playing a Myrtle Beach commercial, and you're in Florida. Ironic. <laughs> yeah, it's great. That was from uh, Be Happy from John. Yeah. Yeah, John, the yeah, Myrtle Beach commercial. That's hilarious. That's the opening commercial on your That's crazy. On on the uh D DCD laser and CNC asked, has anyone set up a problem for an Axiom or a Laguna that uses a pendant instead of going through Mach 3? Let's see. Axiom or Laguna that uses a pendant. Set up a problem? Uses a, uses a probe instead of going through Mach 3. He he typed he typed pendant, but it's supposed to be probe. Oh, gotcha. It uses a, a probe instead of. Uh, have you, has anyone set up a probe? Did you mean for an axiom? Uh, uh, a, a probe that uses an axiom for an axiom or Laguna that uses a pendant instead of going through Mach three. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> uh, well, I can't answer that. If anybody on the chat can answer that for him. Uh, it's an interesting uh, question. Uh, the well, what do I have? Oh, by the way, if anybody's uh, remembers last week, we did the. Uh, I think we did this either last week or the week before. Go over to uh, Crosscut Creations, and he's got the. Uh, I believe he's got the uh, pictures of it. Certainly on his Instagram. Uh, that's Robert Dudinsky. Uh, turned out really nice. The the final product. So let me go ahead and close this up here uh, because I want to move on to 3D art. So the next step uh, in the final step in carving whatever piece you create uh, and, and the creation part is the hard part. You have to learn the software if you don't know it already and uh, convert it. But once it's converted, uh, then it's it's uh, you save it as an STL file and you simply import it into Aspire. Let me create a new file here. Let me see if I can uh, quickly find a. Uh, give me a second here. Let me quickly find a sample STL file somewhere and uh, off the internet so I can show you guys how to import it. Does anybody have any uh, questions while I'm searching here? Nobody's saying a word, at least not on mine, unless my chat froze. Every place requires you to sign up.
the Grunblau link doesn't work. All right, let me get you the Grunblau link real quickly for you guys. I just had it. I I copied and pasted it from the thing too. Okay, guys, here is where you want to go. Try that one. That will actually take you to, uh, you'll see the cable carrier, which is the what I made last week or the week before. That's uh, uh, the drag chain. That's called cable carrier. And uh, the CNC digitizing probe, that one is the... Four, 404 page. Came up when you did it, too. It came up with a 404 page? All right, so... Um, well... Yeah, probably... Let's try, that's the direct link to the, let me see if I can get, get on that. No, well, why is it doing that? It's cutting off the link. Yeah, it's, it's doing it to me too. Hang on a second. Uh, I wonder if I can put it in quotes. And it'll do so, and, then, and it'll be the, there you go. <laughs> I just shoved it in quotes. That works. Give me a second. Let me get the other link for you. Hey, Drew. Hey, Drew. How are you? Copy. So this one here, this should work. Hopefully. Yeah. And that latest one that I sent you has all of Brian's uh, works and... Uh, I mean, I I got this link off. I don't know where I got it. I think off of Google or whatever. So, uh, um, the cable carrier, like I said, and the DIY digitizer files are pretty cool. There's a nice pen holder in there. Uh, and you have the drag knife uh on his main site, uh, mm. which if you wanted to put a drag knife on your, the pen holder is really nice because you could use your uh, CNC as a very expensive plotter. And uh, the drag knife is also very nice, so you can cut with it. Well, I can't find an STL file, but... Uh, most of you know how to import it. It's it's a simple matter to just let me uh, share the screen here. It's a simple matter to uh, go to the page, file, import, import photocarb, machinist, or cut 3D toolpaths or a component or 3D model. If you choose a component or a 3D model, it will uh, it will look for any of these type of files, including STL. If you choose import photocarve or vcarve or cut 3D, well, then you're looking specifically for the Vectric uh, or machinist files from from the Vectric programs. Ah, didn't mean to close it, but that's okay. So that, as they say, is that. Does anybody have any uh, questions? Or do you want me to uh, attempt any kind of design or anything? Because uh, next week, what I, what I might do is I might, or actually, if anybody wants to join me on the panel for any questions or for a chat, let me know and I'll send you a link. 
in the meantime, do you have any uh, design that you'd like me to try out? Any uh, kind of tips? Any questions? Whether on my, uh, I'm, I'm not near it now, but on my vertical CNC machine, on the probe. I still want you to design a three a three D version of our members make a uh, proud member logo. Oh, yeah, I definitely got to do that. That's that's what I'm doing now. This is what I'm doing for next week. I am designing a 3D version of uh, the Makers Media Network Proud Members logo. Bob, Brian, or John has to leave. Somebody just drove up. Have a good one, John. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, Corey is asking how the counterweight system is rolling out. Well, Corey, I've had a... Um, I've had a bit of a delay, unfortunately, because, well, fortunate or unfortunate, whichever way you want to look at it, I, I, um, well, I sold a company and I bought a company, so I'm dealing with that whole, it's taking up a lot of my time, uh, as these transactions do. So at the moment, I am, uh, spending a lot less time in the shop than I want. The pulleys are done. So uh, at least the pulleys are, are, are done, but they're not mounted yet. And I have to get up there and find the right place to mount them. Dave Gatton's here. It's going to be a simple, uh, hey, Dave. Um, it's going to be a very simple build, a uh, very, very simple uh, uh, pulley system. I'm going to, I'm trying to come up with maybe somebody has any ideas out there, common household uh, item or something that I could use for a counterweight, something that's thin less than say four inches and and long it could be some sort of a a cylinder or something i need it to be approximately 35 to 40 pounds so those two of those i'm going to attach to a rope it's going to go to one pulley uh, uh close to the wall that uh, those are going to run up and down behind the machine then the ropes will go out to and and another pulley down to attach to the uh to the sides of the uprights to the sides of the gantry steve misher says clock weights i was thinking window weights clock weights window weights anything that doesn't involve spending an extra amount of money who maybe i'll get some old-fashioned old window weights are metal cylinders with a, a tie a tie-off point on them i'm thinking i'm thinking more like pringles cans I have I have some eyeballs. I can stick them in some concrete uh, with Pringles cans and some maybe some wire mesh to keep it from falling apart. That's an idea. <laughs> uh, garage door extension spring system that gets a little bit too too convoluted for me because um, then you have to adjust the spring and everything. I'd rather have just plain. Uh, um, it's going to be it's going to be at a bunch of different uh, when the CNC is in a vertical position or when in a horizontal position, the gantry is going to be moving this way. The wire the 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 rope will go up toward the roof. So in essence, it will be kind of countering gravity and it won't be interfering. When it's at the sixty five degree angle, it's going to be almost vertical. So it's going to counter gravity at that point, uh, no matter what. And when it's vertical, it's going to be uh, straight up and down the straight line. And at that point, it will counter the, f the full weight of the, of the machine. So in any position, it's not going to be, it's not going to deteriorate. And I found that the best position that I could have the counterweight because is, is up on the ceiling. Because I was considering putting, you know, an elaborate system where it would always pull this way but then what it, it would always pull this way and and uh, attach to the end of the table but then when it goes this way it's pulling this way and the more the further out it is over here the more it's going to pull this way and i don't want when it's coming out here to be negatively affected whereas if it's pulling up all it's doing is countering the weight on the table and that actually is helpful uh, and I'm looking at about, I'm guessing by, I, I had lifted with my arm quite a number of times the, uh, 
And I did some calculations based on how much wood is in there. I'm guessing about 65 to 70 pounds. Um, not including the spindle. Okay. Um, Chad says, Chad is asking if you're trying to see and see a phone. Corey Oral says PVC pipe pipe. Chad Abe. wants to know if I'm going to see if I'm seeing a uh, seeing seeing a phone. Well, if you would have made it on time, you would have seen how to make a, a do it yourself touch probe and how to use it. <laughs> um, Steve Misher says whatever you make, you have to paint it blue. Dave Gatton says use the tube your lead, lead screws came in and add quick crate to it. That's a great see see that's why that's why Dave Gatton is Dave Gatton. That's that's a darn good idea. And Kevin Calhoun said, "How about a show on 3D modeling?" Uh, a show on 3D modeling. That's going to be. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to handle that one. Uh, um, somebody like uh, Ben Brandt, I believe, is his name, it, who is an expert at at Fusion 360, uh, would probably be a good person to to turn to. I I don't know if he does any kind of shows. Chad might be able to answer that. If he does any any YouTube shows on 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 Fusion 360, I'm pretty sure he does. But uh, I'm not going to go to that extent because most beginner and, and novice CNCs, um, including myself, I mean, in, including the more advanced ones like myself, we just download whatever, whatever model is in there because it really is an, an awful lot of effort. If you're very good at CD modeling and it takes years to, to, to work with that kind of stuff, and then you have to... Uh, not only be good at 3D modeling, but know how it looks on a CNC because it's kind of, you have to basically slice it, squish it, and make sure that there's no underneath marks when you're working with 3D. 4D and 5D uh, CNC machines are different. The tool moves all around. You could just about cut anything. But when you're working with, with that precision, it's like uh, I can compare it to a scroll saw, creating a scroll saw pattern. Uh, I can easily create a black and white CNC pattern for using my Photoshop skills, and, and, and you can simply V-carve it, and, and that'll be the end of it. But in order to have that work on a scroll saw, you have to deal with things like uh, floaters. Make sure it's one piece, unless you want to be gluing a bunch of little tiny pieces there. You don't have those issues when you're V-carving a shape on a on on a board. Uh, the so similar or by analogy, when you're working with uh, a 3D modeling program, you have to, on top of that know how to work with a 3D modeling program, know how to work with objects that will see and see properly. You can 3D a horse or a horse's head, let's say, but in order to do a CNC carving of it, you have to slice it in half and you have to make sure that, that there is nothing um, non-viewable from a surface point. Uh, if you follow me there uh it gets a little bit uh it gets quite extensive and and i really don't want to delve into that uh that area uh i want to stick to uh there's still a lot of information to go with uh creating cncs and and hooking up cncs wiring cncs and uh I've probably got a few more shows of some goofy projects and creating uh one of the future shows will be creating parts that will all put together you used to have it around here i have a, two or three little models that that you glue up together out of uh very similar to like the scroll saw people uh just a puzzle that you put together or uh, you know i love those i love cutting pieces out of quarter inch ply and gluing them together to make one big Southern elaborate Junior piece says hi what says what's up hey zach how are you um so yeah, so if anybody missed the beginning of the show where I showed you how to make a 3D probe, uh, very cheap. I mean, we're talking probably under thirty dollars 
Uh, yeah, I can't see any anything uh, there costing more than than a couple bucks. So probably under thirty, forty dollars tops uh, materials you buy at Lowe's or Home Depot, and uh, and the software to to use along with it. Yes, Zach, that's the voice of God. And <laughs> the, Steve Tidell says, "What? whereabouts do you put the scroll chuck on a CNC? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Where do you put the scroll chuck on a CNC? That's easy. And, uh, well, it's not so much put the scroll saw a chuck on a CNC. It's put the lathe underneath the center of the CNC, and that way you don't have to use a tool. You just have the CNC go by. That's called a CNC lathe. And we will be building one in the future. So uh, um, Dave Gatton's got a great design on his page for a simple, um, effective... Well, it's, it's nothing more than you, you take one of the motors and build yourself a do-it-yourself chuck, which he's designed... Uh, a version uh, that that's very practical, very simple to use, and very useful. Motor on one side, and instead of the gantry moving back and forth, the gantry stays still. The motor goes back and forth, or rather rotates. Rotates the chuck, and the CNC goes left and right. And, and you could have a sandwich. And uh, in the future, I will guarantee you that I'm going to show you, yes, I'm going to show you, maybe I'll shoot for April or May, but no promises, a CNC scroll saw. Will you be taking part in the CNC banana challenge? The CNC banana challenge. That's one I'm unfamiliar with, <laughs> but we can do it. Be very easy to make a, a banana on a, on the on a CNC lathe. Yeah, that would be cheating. I love the way Steve. By the way, for anybody that hasn't seen Steve Twidell Temple Boy Turning's video on creating a uh, a pear and a banana, um, creating fruit on a CNC. It's just, it's mind boggling. It's absolutely amazing to watch. It's fun it to watch. It wasn't a CNC, it was a lathe. I'm sorry, lathe. Mind. Too many hours of, of uh, I'm reading this documentation that's just got my mind all frazzled. Um, Steve was turning a, uh, a banana and a bunch of us were watching him. And the banana was just so incredibly fascinating that we had forgotten about the incredible job he just finished doing on a pear. <laughs> so it's uh, it's uh, it's something to watch. And yeah, doing it on a CNC lathe would be cheating. I don't know if it would be an insult, but sure would be fun to try. So. <clears throat> Let's see what other who is Dave Gatton? <laughs> I, I don't know, Corey. Uh, does he have a does Dave have a YouTube channel? <laughs> yes, Rhino was the other one. Thank you, Kevin, for for um uh, for mentioning that. Um that was the one I was I was trying to look at for my list of uh of the programs because uh I um I like using SolidWorks myself, but MeshLab is 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 very versatile and Rhino. Uh, another one now that you mentioned Rhino is uh, AutoCAD, uh, or is Rhino from AutoCAD? Now my mind's a blur again. Rhino is uh, is one of the programs that you can use to convert point cloud data, uh, which again reiterating, it's nothing more than X Y Z coordinates in a in a uh, in a CSV file, uh, and also uh, there's also uh, point cloud data can also include lines. So you not only have points 
but you have little lines, individual lines. Uh, but uh, no, Rhino is an Autodesk. Okay, good. So Autodesk, there, uh, Autodesk also converts uh, into 3D format. Um, sometimes you can, uh, what is it called? 3D topological views. If you look at the uh, software to do topological uh, rendering and, and mesh rendering, but some of those are just, they're all professional industrial programs. They're, they're incredibly expensive. Mesh Lab is free. SolidWorks is reasonable. Autodesk is, is expensive, but it's a very good program. And uh, again, Probit is the uh, is the name of the. Uh, I'll run through it one last time for those of you that came in late. Let me screen share here the program. Oh, come on. There we go. So this is the program. It's called Probit. And what it is is simply a an add-on. You take the folder uh, that, it, that it comes and you drop it into the add-ons folder in Mach 3. And it's that simple. And you'll and uh, with Mach 3, you'll simply uh, I mean, I was I was looking at this. Again, there's the zip folder. You install it into the add-ons folder. You restart Mach 3, and you simply, uh, obviously, pay $30. Yes, no more, $30 um, for, the, uh, for the software. And, I mean, look at this. It does all sorts of different things. It finds the path. If you want to, say, just have the outline of a wrench, you want to see and see uh, a bunch of uh, wood or a bunch of uh, Kazon foam, for instance, to for your uh, tools. You put your pieces on there and you tell it to find the perimeter, and there you go. You could tell it to find a full 3D uh, probe, and you 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 uh, you can also do pocket holes. So if you need to see something as a particular shape. Something is a particular funky shape. Um, you know, a funny, strange, strange shape like round. And you need to find the pocket. And there you go. You put it in there. It'll go all around. It'll first do top, bottom, left, right. And then it'll do the diagonals. And then it'll go one by one and, uh, and do the inside and, and follow along. So that pretty much covers most of it. Let's see. So Mark, Javi, Dave, what is he challenging us to? to? A banana. To make a life-size banana on a regular CNC. Oh, cakewalk. That's a piece of cake. Well, piece of banana. I have I have been issued a challenge, so... Next week, I'm doing the logo for Steve. The following week, two weeks hence, uh, let me make sure it doesn't conflict with the Atlanta show. No. Two weeks hence, I will be carving a banana or designing a banana to carve. Uh, that should take all of a minute. And uh, okay. Yeah, I exaggerate. I'll five, 10 minutes to. Do a banana. Well, actually, I'm I'm glad you mentioned that, Steve Twidell, because uh, that will uh, that will allow me to to show some 3D modeling in Aspire, and it'll also show me to uh, it allow me to do some. Uh, well, I, one thing I haven't covered yet is a fluting toolpath, so I, I'm going to go ahead and include in that show. Let me write it down before I forget. Um how to do fluting toolpaths and fluting is good for a couple of things for those of you who know what fluting is uh or don't know what fluting is it's uh imagine a fluted piece of wood it's something that has like a a burrowed out uh, how can i explain this steve i'm not good at explaining the these these things i just know what they are that's called a flute it's called a flute <laughs> <laughs> okay 
one of the things that's useful about creating fluting toolpaths, this is one of the first things I ever did on my CNC. For those of you that have an issue and a question, this is the most one of the most common questions for a beginning or a novice CNC -er is what feed, what speed should I use? Fluting toolpaths are your most useful tool for determining feeds and speeds. What you do is you create, uh, I wonder, I used to have here for the longest time my, uh, that sample board. Take any piece of, uh, take any piece, <laughs> this is my, uh, this is my Richard Morley uh, thing. It's just scrap. Um, take any piece of MDF or plywood or a piece of wood create fluting tool paths for those of you who who already know how to do this i'll just give you a shortcut to uh, or one of the tips to learning your feeds and speeds have it go from shallow to say half an inch or or all the way down maybe to three quarters of an inch if it's three quarters of an inch thick and then back up so you're create you're having it go from from zero ramping it down you're creating one line to ramp down one line to ramp back up so it's going to create one straight line going deeper and then back up a bunch of them that duplicate that in a row this one here uh do it at uh, 100 inch or 200 inches per minute this one at 100 this one at 50 this one at 80. choose progressively and and make sure to number them uh don't stick your hands in there while the machine's running, but know which ones they are and, and take a little Sharpie and number them. You could take a look at the cut on whatever sample piece of wood you have and take a look at the edges. Take a look at the splintering. You know, Do the different feeds. The, uh, play with the ramp, with the, uh, with the plunge rate, so you could see what how that affects the wood play with the feed rate so you can see how that affects the wood and do a few pieces and try it with different speed rates on the on the router on the on the router bit and try different router bits because uh, the v carve reacts considerably differently than than uh, than an end mill up 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 cut down cut you could spend you could spend an entire week and 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 half a showroom of of plywood testing to get the perfect feeds and speed and you'll get a lot closer and you'll know a lot more about what to to use but also keep in mind after all of that every wood is different and your bit depending on how sharp it is there are a lot of variables which can which can still cause a wood to splinter or not be perfect, et cetera, et cetera. But that's uh, my tip on feeds and speeds. Yeah, rocket science, uh, yeah, I don't know. Rocket science would be easier, but who would turn my rocket? Let's see. Yeah, definitely, Corey. It's 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 uh, it's a it's an easy way to calibrate. It's one of the first things I, I when I built this machine that built this when I got well, I did kind of build a machine. For those of you who don't know the story of of the Cam Master, a few years ago when I got it, I was a little worried about building my own machine because I didn't know what I didn't know. So I was so fear, unfortunately, caused me. I was choosing between a Gatton and this machine. This machine cost, at the time, eight times more than a Gatton. Well, I had the money burning a hole in my pocket, and I bought the machine figuring, hey, it's all turnkey, not a problem. I don't have to build anything because I'm afraid I'll mess something up. And uh, so I didn't know what I didn't know. Oh, man, if I would have known how simple and how easy it was, well, uh, boy, would I made a different decision back then. But came in a crate, 
they dropped it off. I unpacked the crate. It was a beautiful thing. Wouldn't fit through the door. And I don't have, I have a sealed garage door, so wouldn't fit through the door. Guess what? Had to take it apart. You know, not completely, but I had to take the gantry off. I had to take the spoil board off. And I had to basically maneuver it all the way through the door and hook it all back up. So in the end, I ended up half building a CNC anyway. So it's just crazy. Do I have enough mugs on my... You know, you never know when when I've been I've been using this one for probably going on a couple a month or two now. I used the red one for Christmas time. Uh, the blue one was my first one, so I'm, I'm quite fond of that one. I'll eventually be talking to Chad, the guy. I got to get a yellow one. Got to get a. Uh, I was thinking of orange, but you know, I mean, there's a lot of people that are a fan of safety orange. I've never been a fan of orange. Yellow, definitely. I want to get a funky purple one. Just to say I have a funky purple one. White would definitely be good. And uh, Steve just put the uh, the link there for mancraftingtm.com where you can get one of these mugs. Googly eyes not included. Um, I love this stuff. For those of you who like their drinks cold or hot. And while I'm shouting out plugs before the end here, I will uh, also like to give uh, once again a shout out to my friend Steve Nealon from uh, Carneal Media. If you have any need at all for a fantastic website, uh, in fact, half the people in this in this chat room have a um website by steve i mean by steve yes by steve man my mind is going today really <laughs> i'm fading fast he works on it uh, all day long all night long i know because i am in hangouts with him all day long all night long and he's always on the computer working on someone's site making it better tweaking it um if you want to sell merchandise He's got you covered. If you want to sell swag, uh, you know, like a bunch of different shirts or caps or whatever, he's got you covered. You'll find half a dozen people in that in the in the chat room that uh, to plug them some more. So feel free go to harneomedia.com. And uh, likewise, I'd also like to plug Makers Media Network, a group of like-minded woodworkers who. Just uh, like to share their content, share their resources, promote each other, and just a bunch of good friends that uh, constantly growing. Just putting that out there who want to help each other. And with that, every yeah, my mind is going today. Yeah, not just today, right, Mark? With that, I will uh, bid you all a fond to do. It's just past the bewitching hour. Have a wonderful uh, week, and I'll see you all next week. We'll do a nice simple sign and uh, and have a nice little panel on here, so we'll have some chat going on. Good night, all. Have a wonderful uh, rest of the week. <laughs>